Happy Halloween and welcome back to Interpreting the Scares, where today we're taking a look at the latest installment of Nigel Box series Bad Ben called Bad Ben 7 The Haunted Highway. Now, I've reviewed the first and second film on my channel before and the rest of the series on my website, but before you go looking for them, I want to first say that I didn't understand them. I watched them all in a span of a couple days and I didn't let them sit and breathe like a fine wine before I reviewed them. Had I thought of them a little bit more, I probably would have respected them more for what they are. Instead, I compared them to Hollywood. Don't compare it to Hollywood, it's not Hollywood. Now, it's been a few months and I've been able to appreciate it more and I watched Bad Ben 7 live during its premiere on Facebook and I gotta say, I had a blast, even with some of the glitches and lagging issues the movie ran into along the way. Bad Ben, The Haunted Highway follows around Tom Riley once again as he is a driver for Drop You Off, which is basically his variation of Uber or Lyft. He no longer lives at the house that we saw in the other films, but that doesn't stop it from being a major player in this film as well. It turns out every passenger that he picks up that night is headed to the house for some unknown reason, and thus he is lured in once again to this hellmouth of a house. I'll say what I said during the live stream of this thing. It is incredibly difficult to make a movie in a single year when you have a huge group of talented writers helping you out. Nigel Bach is but one man, and he does at least two of these movies every year. Not only that, but he changes up the formula quite a bit every single time, and that deserves huge props, no matter the technical imperfections the film may run into, because it's definitely going to run into them. This is a movie with a very low budget, and Nigel is always able to toe that line of what he can and cannot do with the budget available. That's a task that even veteran filmmakers struggle with because they're perfectionists. I don't have the overall sense that Nigel Bach is a perfectionist. Obviously, the found footage format helps out issues that a low budget introduces, but anyone can do a found footage film. We always need new ways to see it. That can't always be paranormal activity, and by having the cameras set up in and around the car is a great idea on its own. Having them there because of an Uber-esque history uh, is even better, as it does another thing that found footage films often struggle with, which is explain why the characters are filming things in the first place and why they continue filming after the weird things begin to happen. It all made sense here. Not only that, but like I said, when I look at sequels, I look for something different, something new, I don't want the same thing every time, and that's one thing Nigel Bach really does do well. Now let's talk about some issues because it's still imperfect. This is a short film, not a short film, a short film, and I'm not going to complain about the length so much since my own movies on Amazon Prime are about that length. However, I wanna say that there is a lot of shots of driving. On one hand, you do need it. On another, too much of a good thing is a bad thing because it starts to feel a little bit filler, like filler material, and filler material is never good. And that's when the runtime comes into play. It's already short with filler material. The actual scenes where people are talking and doing things probably don't make up a lot of time. I wish it did have more of those scenes though because those scenes introduce you to a lot of great colorful characters which by the way are all integral to the development into what's happening in the film. Another problem a lot of Hollywood films run into, characters that are just there basically to stand around. Not here, everybody does serve a purpose. Also, as far as the narrative goes, there wasn't much of one. This was mostly a comedy above all else, as it mostly allowed Nigel Bach to let loose his string of F-bombs after F-bombs, which are ridiculous because he's supposed to be a professional Uber-like driver and he's basically the most unprofessional guy and he's upsetting all his passengers. And I love it because it's hilarious, but narratively, our hero isn't attempting to do anything specific. So there was no point B to a point A, and as such, there wasn't many literary obstacles standing in his way. There were simply things that happened, which doesn't always mean obstacles. That being said, even without that narrative, I feel like this addition to the series also opened up the mythos a little bit more in the same way the Conjuring films introduce otherworldly creatures into the mix. There's potentially something similar happening in this movie, and that really does intrigue me if that's the case. But who knows? Anyways, I gave Bad Ben 7 The Haunted Highway 76%, 76 out of 100 possible stars, granting it the letter grade of C+. A couple of other horror films released this year with the same letter grade is Midsummer and Jordan Peele's Us. 
Take that as you will. Guys, have you seen any of the Bad Ben films? Are you a fan? Let me know what you think of them as a whole, and if you've seen this latest film. As for YouTube, you know what to do. You can subscribe to my channel if you like this review and like to see some more like it. Hit the thumbs up button because that always helps out my channel. And as always, there's a little bell icon that you can press, and that helps notify you when I come out with my next review. And until then, peace out.